Big breaking story just in the last few days about Sean P. Diddy Combs being investigated as part of a sex trafficking probe. We're joined now live by Bianca Davis. She's an expert on sex trafficking. She's a CEO of New Friends New Life, a nonprofit that restores and empowers victims. So what do we know? Bianca, first of all, thank you so much for being with us. What do we know about this case and uh, how did it all come about? Uh, Good morning. It's great to be here. I think um, what we know is that this is a federal investigation of a federal crime. And so sex trafficking is a federal crime that involves the use of force, fraud, or coercion to compel someone to commit a sexual act. Um, Within this definition, if that person is a minor, you don't have to prove force, fraud, or coercion. It's automatically a crime. So what we know is that um, the federal agents have enough information and data to warrant an investigation into um, Mr. Sean Combs and his property around this case. And, and that's what it is. It, it is an investigation right now. There's no there's no conviction mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. Correct. Do people really understand think, how big sex trafficking is in the United States? Right. I was just going to say that I don't think that people realize what um, how big this crime is. Um, it's a, first of all, it's an international crisis and in crime with an estimated 40 million um, victims around the world. But here in the United States, it is very prevalent. And I think one of the reasons it goes unnoticed is because it may look slightly different. Like in these cases, we aren't looking necessarily for white vans in a parking lot. We aren't looking for someone who was tied up in a basement in handcuffs. So the images that we have of what sex trafficking means, it's not a complete picture. And that's why it goes unnoticed. That's why it's happening right under our noses. When we look at trafficking busts in the United States, it's typically associated with men of power and influence and resource. Um, The trafficker or the buyer tends to be someone who is a boyfriend or a partner or someone who is expressing love and concern to the victim. That's why we don't notice that it's happening, because it's cloaked and wrapped in all of these socially acceptable environments. Bianca Davis is with us, CEO of New Friends, New Life, talking about uh, this uh, this incredible story uh, surrounding P. Diddy, Sean Combs, uh, as part of a sex trafficking probe. Now, we're not sure if he's even the target of the investigation. Bianca, how hard or easy is it for victims of sex, sex trafficking to break free from that, to get help, or, or, or are enough resources available for them? Yes, that's a great question. It is extremely difficult for victims to break free from this cycle. One of the reasons is because victims rarely identify with being victims of this crime. Going back to the earlier point of um, how we think it looks, a victim will say, well, you know, I've I've never been transported across a border or I wasn't physically held against my will. So they don't even identify as being victims of the crime. So you cannot, you know, what you misdiagnose, you will mistreat. So there's no way they're going to step forward if they don't even realize that they're in trouble. The other part of it is because the trafficker um, is often someone that they know and care about, there is this internal battle of turning in this person that they love. Um, So that's another thing that keeps um, a lot of victims tethered to this industry. There's also the financial support. A lot of victims are relying on their trafficker for financial help. That's their source of income. And so the question becomes, where do I go? What do I do? So that speaks to the lack of resources or the limited resources. We're so grateful that New Friends Through Life has been around in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for 25 years restore women and girls who've been trapped in this industry, providing um, counseling, immediate case management support, and economic empowerment, reintroducing her to the working environment, to the traditional working environment in a way that helps her sustain herself. Is DFW a hot spot for this kind of thing? Yes, it is. Actually, Texas ranks second in the nation for highest number of human trafficking victims. Now, this includes both 
sex trafficking and labor trafficking. And it's the two sides of the same coin, right? So sex trafficking is forced fraud and coercion to commit a sexual act. Labor trafficking is forced fraud or coercion to work against your will. But Texas ranks second in the nation. And here in the state, Dallas ranks second behind Houston. So it is a huge problem in our community. But the good news is the DFW area is doing more than many other cities to combat this crime. Between working with law enforcement and nonprofits like New Friends to Life, we are really working to raise awareness and to hold perpetrators accountable. Why is Texas one of the hotspots in the United States? Is it our geographic location? Yeah, it's several reasons. It's the sheer size of the state. It's the ease of getting around the state, not necessarily for the victims, but because the magic formula tends to be men with money, we are in a city where the economy is good. There are a lot of businessmen. There are a lot of big activities that happen. We have huge conferences and sporting events. So people are coming in all the time to do business and other things. And while they're here, they are, oh, by the way, purchasing women and girls primarily, which is just awful to think of. But that's one of the reasons. The things that make this such a flourishing economy and state are some of the same things that make us susceptible um, to this crime because the resources are here, the money is here, and the men are, are gathered in this city and in this state pretty often. The CEO of New Friends, New Life. This is Bianca Davis. Bianca, thank you for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.